Guten Tag, Grade 11 and welcome to your second last lesson on water availability. Uh, the last one will be wastage and cost of water. So uh, let's get through this. So we're going to start with exotic plantation and depletion of the water table. Um, I would probably say it is extremely important that you understand how this water, what is the water table um, and how it shifts and changes just in case somehow I find some case study which involves you know, the change in the pH of the water and how that's going to kill humans and, you know, like, just maybe if I find something like that, um, maybe it's important. <laughs> Let's continue. Okay, so exotic plantations and depletion of the water table. Exotic plants are plants that are not indigenous to South Africa. A better word of saying this is an alien species, okay? So a species that did not originate in South Africa but grows very well in South Africa and majority of the alien species actually do grow very well in South Africa because we have quite high access to water and not many predators as a whole. They use more water than indigenous plants and that is the main thing that you need to take away from this particular part of the lesson is that they, if they take away too much water it means that there's not going to be enough water for um, the indigenous species that naturally occur in South Africa, taking away their water means that indigenous species or endemic species for that matter are going to die. And if they die, we're going to lose biodiversity. And you know how the whole thing falls to pieces. Exotic trees are planted in plantations as um, the wood is used for many purposes. Okay, So the reason why we actively have a couple of these things in South Africa is because we use them and we don't have natural indigenous species that can do the same. Examples are to make paper con uh, in the construction industry and for furniture. The main one that should come to mind every time I talk about this is pine trees because pine trees are used to make paper. Pine trees are for construction industry and for furniture. Majority of the furniture that you have in your house that is covered by cloth or leather or whatever you have yours covered in, um, the basis of it, the actual structure is made out of a pine tree or pine wood for that matter. In short term, exotic plantations may be beneficial as they bring us money. But you, what you're noticing there specifically on the top left hand side, um, look at the color of the ground. The color of the ground is not green. That is because of all those pine needles which have fallen on the floor. Now, if you've ever walked up to a pine tree and you, you rub it and you, you smell it in your fingers, you'll note that it has a very like what we you would just call pine gel, you know, has a very strong pine smell to it. Um, those pine needles are extremely high in acid and that acid like, becomes broken down and moved into the soil whenever um, that happens. And when the, acidic, the soil becomes more acidic, that means that any species that live underneath are then going to die out. Remember that these plants don't grow overnight as well. They grow very quickly, but if they don't grow very quick, oh, sorry, if they... <laughs> If they are able to grow very quickly, that means that they're stealing all the nutrients from the other plants. So in other words, their competition is extremely high. The middle picture, you can see that we have um, we have large, expansive areas. And if you've ever driven to Durban, you'll note on the right and left hand side of the Sony Pass, um, oh, is it from Renan's Pass? I can't remember, from Renan's Pass, uh, there's all these just pine trees in these forests where they grow a lot of the stuff. And the third picture, not to, um, like impressive either but all that i want to show you is how many logs of wood are on there so once those trees have grown to their specific height they need to cut that entire forest down and then regrow and replenish the land with all the nutrients that were taken out by the fact that they cut them down all right so plantations and depletion of the water table <laughs> important okay in the long term absorption of um large amounts of water by such plantations reduces the water table. We'll deal with it in a couple of slides from here. Reducing the availability of water, okay? Um, so this is the amount of water that naturally occurs in the soil that is held on um, by the soil particles as well as the rocks. And if those plants just keep on absorbing all of that liquid, there's going to be nothing left for anything else to grow. Um, and the reason why we um, plant these is for indigenous vegetation, for domestic and commercial and industrial use. Okay, so that's it. That's all you need to know about depletion of water. Alien species 
and how bad they are. Um, also, before we continue, another alien invasive species that you might not know of uh, and that is all over the place is a weeping willow, okay, or a willow tree, also known as a black wattle tree. Um, those ones with the long vines that you've always wanted to climb on. And when Stephen climbed on one and tried to swing, he fell off and knocked the wind out of himself. So I'm not a smart kid, but anyway, um, those, and they are so thirsty that they will actually cause the death of a whole bunch of plants in the surrounding areas of them. Um, jacaranda trees, which is extremely like famous in um, Pretoria, they are also um, alien invasive species. So, you know, it's just how we use or how we use these things and how we look after them uh, it means how much damage they can actually do all right so boreholes and effects on aquifers all right so boreholes and the effects of aquifers the surface water from rain dew and mist okay those are all types of precipitation slowly pass through the upper layers of the soil until it reaches a layer of permeable rock now, if you don't remember what the word permeable means, that means it allows anything through. So this is a type of rock that is um, like quite tightly put together right at the bottom, but quite loose on the way up. And all that rock can actually hold onto a lot of that water as it goes along. Um, into that, that permeable layer of rock is where we're going to find our ground water. Okay, so this is the water that is actually held on by these rocks. And then just above that, wherever the maximum layer of their groundwater is, is known as the water table. OK, this is a saturated zone, which means that every nook and cranny is chock-a-block full of water. Remember that water is a universal. Um, oh, it's gone. <laughs> uh, universal solvent as well, which means that all anything that can dissolve in that water will also dissolve in that water. Um, so as it goes through the soil, it will be absorbing a lot of those nutrients and will sit at the bottom, which is then a fantastic buffet for any plant that is able to grow deep enough to actually get that. But now, if I have a whole bunch of alien invasive species and I plant them on top, it's going to suck up the satur unsaturated zone, which is just above that. When that pulls up, there's going to be an um, osmotic difference. So there's going to be a lot of water in one place and not in the other. And all the water is going to move to an area where there is no or very little water, which means that entire water table is going to shift up. Now, if that water table shifts up and it has a whole bunch of dissolved acidic solutes inside of it, um, some hydrochloric acid, maybe some nitric acid, some sulfuric acid, whatever's floating around in that soil over there, and that rises up, that could cause anything that is growing on the surface of the land to die, okay? Um, a couple of years ago, there was a big problem where um, they were saying that there was a whole lot of, um, well, our water table, specifically here in Brackenhurst and Bracken Downs, were, and Maysdal actually, was rising quite substantially because of the amount of water that was being pulled up um, by boreholes, which is the next slide we're going to be talking about. And by using all that water and the water table rising, they were actually going to cause a huge uh, drop in pH. The acidity of the groundwater itself would have been between 4 and 5, which is extremely acidic, and that would have caused not just death to plants, but also to humans, because a lot of that water is pumped out and used in a borehole. So let's look at these things called boreholes. So it is, a, it is possible to extract the water by drilling a borehole, forming an aquifer, okay? So the aquifer is a column of water, okay? So here's a definition at the bottom. An aquifer is a wet underground layer of water bearing permeable rock, from which groundwater can be extracted using a borehole. That is a lovely definition. Write it down now. <laughs> All right, so you dig into and eventually you hit the water table. Once you hit the water table, you can then pump the water out from the permeable rock. Um, and as it moves upwards, you can then um, store it and or use it to water your garden. Or if you filter it yourself, you can drink from it and or shower from it. So how do aquifers work? I'm not worried about how they work. I'm more interested in pointing out how deep some of the aquifers can go. Remember, the deeper you dig, the more expensive, but the more access to water you're going to have. So if you dig really deep, you'll have access to that um, saturated part. Um, whereas if you don't dig deep enough, you'll only hit the top of the water table and you'll think that you'll be fine. 
But the problem is the more water we use, the higher the water table becomes. All right, if we keep on sucking out, eventually we're going to lose all of that water. And that's all I wanted to point out here. All right, so when a water extracted from boreholes is generally very clean, as it has been filtered, as it passed through the layers of soil, remember, like there's an old wife's tale that if water has run over two rocks, it's clean, or three rocks or something. Go ask your parents, I think they might know. And that is because running it through soil actually acts as a natural filter, and that filter um, allows that water to be completely drinkable. So the water taken out is replaced by water from precipitation, which is the rain, dew, and mist, as well as the water from rivers and lakes. If too many boreholes, okay, so the top part is an advantage, the bottom part is a disadvantage. If too many boreholes are drilled over a small area, the aquifer will run dry since it will have very little time to fill up. And now we're just thinking about humans again, like, oh, humans are going to have water. What about the poor plants? Lastly, water extracted from the aquifer is used for household purposes and agriculture. So a lot of farmers would rather invest in a borehole as opposed to a um, irrigation system from natural water land because it's cheaper and they don't have to pay as much money. So when you do drill a borehole, you do need to pay a nominal amount of uh, for like just having access to water because you're still involved in plumbing, but you're not buying water directly from the government themselves. So if you're able to put that money in, uh, borehole water is extremely safe and it's actually, it, it tastes a lot better than the water we get out of our taps. It's just not as well treated. Finally, I just wanted to show you aquifer productivity. So where in the world um, is there like extremely, like where could you drill the most amount of boreholes? Um, and that is not in South Africa. You can see that we are low to low moderate, um, even though we do a lot of agriculture over here. Thankfully, we have a lot of rivers and our rivers are where we get majority of our water from. We cannot rely on these aquifers and that's because of ground types and amount of precipitation. We just don't have enough. Remember, as you get to the equator, it's going to rain more and more, which is ultimately going to cause you to have more water available to yourself. All right, that's the end of that. Just two more and then water quality and we're finished with water. Enjoy your day grade 11s.